Hey everybody, Dustin here from Backcountry Cuisine, and today we're talking about cook pots. That's right, cook pots. We are gonna look at all the different types of cook pots that are out there, how to choose, what to pick, material set, all that stuff. So let's get into it. Okay, I think the first place to start is to think about material. Um, I like that because it kind of narrows down your choices, right? So uh, at the cheapest level, you have aluminum. Aluminum's great, uh, and it works just fine. There have been concerns about Alzheimer's and all that kind of stuff, but I haven't really heard any legitimate s stuff that's been out there. But you know, if it's a concern, then you can think about that. Um, but aluminum has been used for a long time for cook pots and it's very lightweight, very cheap, and uh, works great. So aluminum is a great option in general to go with. The other classic one is stainless steel. Stainless steel, significantly heavier, much more durable. Didn't mention it. One of the disadvantages of aluminum, bends really easily. You drop it, you're gonna get a ding in it. It, it actually damages very quickly. Stainless steel, I think I've had this particular cook pot for probably 15, 20 years, and the thing is a little discolored, but it's still really in good shape. So uh, stainless steel, amazing. You can, you can squeeze on and push on it, and it really holds up pretty well, but way, way heavier. Still pretty much on the cheap end of spectrum. Aluminum is the cheapest, stainless steel is a little bit more expensive. You can also get anodized, this is like an anodized aluminum and they've got all kinds of new coatings that they're putting inside of these where they the anodized is a little bit tougher it's uh, a little bit better for uh, especially for the non-stick kind of thing they've got these new coatings in here the ceramic coatings are pretty good makes them heavier so they're a little lighter still than stainless steel but um, if you're gonna go aluminum, I really like the anodized thing because it, it does make them a little more, it just seems to be more robust, not so cheapy, not so chintzy, but a little bit heavier, but still really good. Okay. And then of course, the creme de la creme are the titanium pots. And the reason why titanium is so much um, better, if you wanna call it that, is because it is lightweight for the weight, sorry lightweight for the strength is what I meant to say. So you can get similar strengths of a stainless steel just by using a thinner material because titanium is such a strong metal. And so you can get lighter pots. I mean, some of these pots are significantly lighter. So titanium is great, super expensive, super expensive. You can pay twice as much for a, a aluminum, or sorry, a titanium pot than a stainless steel. And aluminum is usually about, the cheapest aluminum is about half or even less than a stainless steel. So you know, it, it goes up pretty quickly. Some of these pots, like this cook pot, uh, cost me about, let's say 70 bucks, something like that. So not cheap, not cheap at all. Whereas you can get stainless steel for 50 bucks, 40 bucks. Uh, aluminum, you can sometimes find it for 10 bucks. So you can get really, really cheap stuff there. Okay, so that's material type. Then you've got size. Now what kind of size do you wanna get? Um, individual size? something that goes up to a liter. You know, I, I've gotten away with 800 mils. It's totally doable for a single person, 800 milliliters, but I wouldn't go any less than that. I kind of think of as 800 milliliters, well, 750 you can get by with. That's I've done that too. That's this one here. This is my 750 cook pot, and that works fine too. So let's say let's say 750 per person. Um, so if you've got two people, then you want something that's at least 1,500 milliliters or 1.5 liters. This one here is a, is a 1.4. I think of it ever new and it works it's a little bit small for my wife and i but it does work if you're a big eater though you're going to want a larger pot so this toast is uh one point i want to say 1.8 something like that 1.7 and so much much easier to get all the food in you need for two people in something like this all right so that's size again about 750 to 800 milliliters per person if you're a big eater and you want a lot of food volume wise then you probably want to go closer to 900 to a thousand milliliters or one liter per person. All right, so that's that. Next, let's talk about some of the kind of design ideas. You'll see, you've got some pots, like this Stanley, I think this was like 10 bucks. 
at uh, off of Amazon. Nice stainless steel, it's gonna be durable. Super tall, right? The problem with super tall pots is twofold. One, when the heat hits the bottom of the pan, it spreads out really fast and you lose a lot of heat out the side of your pot. So it makes your stove less efficient. The other thing that's not as good about it is that you have, um, you have fewer, there are some cook stoves out there where you're not gonna get much stability out of this, right? Because the, the cook surface, the stove top arms, won't necessarily be uh, big enough. Like sometimes they have a big hole in the middle and this may be a little unstable inside. It might slip inside and you're spilling food. And of course, just being taller means that you have more chances of tipping. So it's not as stable a pot. I prefer, these aren't bad. You can totally get by with them, but I do prefer something that's a little bit wider. This one's about six inches wide. So that would, that's kind of for me personally, the minimum that I would go with is to six inch wide but um, it is more beneficial from an energy standpoint to have a wider bottom. You will lose less heat because as the flame travels along the bottom of the pan, it's going to be taking some of that heat and converting it and transferring it into, not converting, transferring it into your pan. So the wider the base, the more heat transfer you're going to get. And also it's easier to eat out of, it's easier to stir. If you've got a spoon you're trying to stir in here you need a long one and you're having a hard time getting inside that was one of my biggest complaints with the system stoves if i was to eat out of the pot then it just it was a little awkward to kind of be digging down in there to get to my food it's fine it works but i'm not a, i'm not a huge fan um so that's kind of design i much prefer shorter wider pots much prefer they're much more stable on your stove and they're gonna have a better heat transfer. So that's what I like. But have I used narrow pots like this? Yeah, I have, and they work fine. They do, they will still cook well. I think the last thing for me to talk with you about are the, these system stoves are really common. So the Jet Boil or the, um, oh, what's the other one? The MSR one, I can't think what it is. Wind, wind burner or something like that. These stoves are pretty cool, right? You attach them to a canister and then this attaches to the bottom of your, your cook pot. And so it's all this kind of integrated system and it works really well. They are really good and they are very efficient at heating up your water quickly. They're heavier than a lot of other systems you can get. And they have these little grills at the bottom and these are called uh, heat sinks or heat exchangers or something like that. Basically what happens is as the flame hits the bottom of the pot, it goes through these little fins. Here, I'll show you a better one. Come closer. Get you in a little tighter. There's these little ridges inside of the pot. So right inside of here, these little fins, they're attached to the bottom of the cook pot and the flame hits the bottom of the pot and spreads out and goes through these. And as it goes through these little ridges, those ridges also absorb some of that heat. And then as they absorb heat, they transfer it into the bottom of your pot. It does make your stove more efficient, no question about it. It also makes your stove, or your, sorry, your, um, your cook pot more efficient. It also makes your cook pot a lot heavier. So will you save fuel? Absolutely. Will you save enough fuel to justify the extra weight on this? That depends on a lot of things. The length of your trip and how much you're going to use your stove. So when do I bring one of these cook pots? When I'm snow camping. I'm going to be running this stove for a couple hours every night probably while I'm melting snow and I'm gonna be just cooking a lot and so that will save me fuel enough fuel to um, justify it it also speeds up the process which I really like in snow camping that's worth it for me snow camping I want faster melting of my snow that's really important so even if I'm going for a one night trip where it's probably not gonna save the same amount of fuel it's gonna be pretty close and it's worth it for the the speed. So I like heat exchangers on the bottom of my pots if I'm snow camping. If it's summertime, it doesn't bother me at all. I don't need it. I'm not that time intensive on it. So lots of options out here for cook pots. Again, you can go with the system. I don't like their height. Uh, oh, one thing also to be thinking about are the handles, right? So some come with handles built in. That's awesome. I really like that. They fold up nice and compact. Some of them, like the stainless steel one, you need to have an extra pot gripper. 
they're very stable and they give a nice grip to it, but they're extra weight. And they're also something you can lose, um, you something you can forget and leave behind. And it is hard to pick up a full pot that's really hot. So I do like having integrated handles. That's something that I prefer. Um, a lot of them have integrated handles now, so that's not a big deal. I'm surprised at how well they they do at not melting, first of all, like these handle little coatings on it, the little rubberized coating. They don't melt very easily. Sometimes they'll melt a little bit at the edges, but not too much. And then um, I'm also impressed with how they uh, don't transfer too much heat out to the handles. They'll get a little hot, but not too bad. So that's all about cook, cook pots. And uh, trying to choose one is a very personal choice. You wanna know if you're doing singles, doubles, and all that. I will tell you that in general, if you're interested in a two-person titanium pot, the Tokes, T-O-A-K-S, Tokes pots are really good. They have held up really well for me. They've been durable. They are way cheaper than the Evernews. I got this Evernew because it's a, a couple ounces lighter and I'm like one of those ounce weenies. But um, I'll tell you, it's way more expensive, way more expensive for these Evernews than the Tokes. And I've been really happy with the Toke stuff so I would not shy away from that if you want the cheapest of the cheap these are called Imusa mugs I-M-U-S-A Imusa and uh, they've got one of these handles the metal handles so you this thing gets freaking hot you do need to have some sort of pot gripper I use the chamois cloths and I bring one of those and I use that to grab with it uh, but super cheap you can pick these up sometimes for five bucks and they're a liter so plenty for one person so great cheap option. Uh, stainless steel will last you forever, but they're heavy. And then the new ceramic stuff that MSR has put out. I've got one of their pans, another video, pans. Uh, I've got one of their pans and I love it. The thing is incredible for nonstick, incredible. So that's picking cook pots and I uh, hope that helped out. If you have any questions, come check us out at backcountrycuisine.net. Leave a comment down, subscribe, all that good stuff. And take care and eat well. Thank you.